Legends speak of a weapon imbued with the heart of a dragon, buried and waiting for its master to return. Long ago, Tibetan monks defeated the marauding dragon emperor and sealed away the dagger of Jean with sacred artifacts, the seraph and the talion. The seraph was later stolen and the magician Johnny Bartoli acquired it with designs to sail to Tibet to take the talion and the dagger by force. The Brotherhood of Monks destroyed his cruise ship en route, killing Johnny and leaving the seraph lost at sea. Now, years later, Johnny's son Marco has located the shipwreck and intends to continue in his father's footsteps. He's amassed considerable forces to recover the seraph and storm the monastery where the monks still guard the talion so that he can finally claim the dagger for himself. Coincidentally, as all this is happening, Lara Croft arrives at the Great Wall of China following the legend of the dagger on her own and setting down a path toward inevitable conflict with Bartoli and his cult. But before we get to that, Lara's home revisited. The tutorial is slightly more involved this time. Tomb Raider 1 really just taught jumping, grabbing, and swimming. 2 expands this with an assault course that includes slopes, wading, climbing, zip lines, and interacting with objects. It still leaves out a lot of essentials like pulling blocks and combat, but it's an improvement. There's no ending here like the swimming pool was in one, although you can set a time record on the assault course, but there is a secret to discover. If we explore the hedge maze, we can find a button that opens a time door inside the house, and if we can get through that door within about 70 seconds, we can see Lara's secret treasure room with a couple of objects from Tomb Raider 1. Nothing major, but it's a nice reward for fully engaging the level. The upstairs adds Lara's bedroom and an attic to the previous iterations, but they're just for show right now. We will stop by here again in just a little bit. Now let's get started on the real deal. The opening level here is much deadlier than Tomb Raider 1's. It opens with a vertical climb along this cave wall past the waiting pool, with the first silver dragon secret about halfway up, and an old crumbling guard tower at the top. This is the proper jumping tutorial. Here's another angle that shows the different levels we have to climb through. The lowest level has a fragmented path to navigate just to get started. Fun fact, in the PlayStation 1 pack-in demo disc I got for Christmas 1997, the attract mode shows a fancy backflip sequence to get up here on this path that I thought was the required way, so it took me hours just to figure out the backflip roll and get up there the first time. The tiger roars also really freaked me out. The second orange part of the path has a longer jump across. The secret's just a hop away, although it kind of blends in, and the highest level requires another long jump. The green slopes here mean that we won't plummet to our deaths if we miss a jump along the way, which is nice. At the top, a trap door in the guard tower drops us into a flooded basement, and down here is the final jumping exercise. A long jump and grab to reach the exit switch. And here, the water is the safety net. Then we finally get to go outside for the first time in a proper Tomb Raider level. Out here, the obvious door ahead is locked, but we were just reassured that falling into water doesn't kill us, so we can dive on into the pool along the wall. This is then the swimming lesson, because we can't proceed without the gate key which is in this underwater cave. We climb back up into the next guardhouse. Lara hates spiders, so we shoot a lot of them. Get another key up the ladder, which is a climbing lesson, and continue into the next room where Lara uses her super strength to drag a block out of the way. This waist-high pool has shuriken shooters arrayed across it in a grid, encouraging us to find the crack in the wall on the left that allows us to hang and shimmy over the top of the shooters. Although it doesn't hurt that bad to just walk through them. Past a collapsing floor pushing us ahead, two boulders are released with a disorienting camera angle chasing us downhill where a spike trap forces a jump into a spike trash compactor. There's an ammo pickup on the floor that can tempt some players to their doom, but we're meant to climb up and out to catch our breath before navigating a hall of collapsing floors and swinging swords, punctuated by another pair of spiked walls and the Jade Dragon, with just enough time to grab it and get out if we're very precise. No time to stop, as more collapsing floors beget a chase with the left walls closing in and a final single spiked wall that we escaped by intentionally falling through a collapsing floor this time. After all that, the rolling pizza cutters are pretty trivial. Finally, this zip line leads to the end of the level, but if we instead drop down the cliff face, we can catch a cavelet below the edge and descend a hidden ladder to the Lost Valley floor, where the gold dragon awaits and the game's twin Tyrannosaurus Rex encounter. Back up top, we ride the actual zipline across to a sealed temple gate and a clue to our next destination. Venice has two smaller contained sequences before opening things up. Swimming under the boathouse gate lets us open the dockhouse. A couple switches in here take us up to the roof, and we can shoot out the windows to get inside, which is a mechanic we'll see more later. Straight through the windows is an awning where we can get revenge on the shooter in the courtyard and take his boathouse key, although it won't get us very far yet. Inside the hallway between the windows, we can open a high door across the channel with a cutscene. To reach it, we'll have to cross more bright red awnings high above the water. We can finally open the tunnel and extract our boat. Also, the new goon down on the dock drops armor-piercing pistols, formerly known as the Magnums. 
The dark sewerish tunnel leads down a waterfall into a flooded room, but there are two secret dragons along the way if we disembark in the dark. The idea down here is to park our boat in the lock, get out, and pull the switch past this window to flood the lock, pull the now underwater wall lever to open the exit gate and proceed out into the canals. They're sort of a figure eight shape with a lot of closed doors to start with. The overall goal is to open these two gates so we can open a timed exit door before it closes. There's a raised courtyard over here where we can kill a guy for a key to the nearby door and drop down to open the first gate. At the other end of the canal is a door that Agoon will open when we step onto the dock, with a dark switch inside to open a room across the way with another cutscene. We can also grab the final secret up on this bridge through the windows because it won't be convenient to stop here later. The room with the ladders we just opened has an iron key for a door near the exit and forces us upstairs into an ambush to escape. Finally, we can head to the Iron Key Door, where a second sacrificial boat waits out front, suggesting the most effective way to clear the mines blocking the exit room. And inside, we can open the other alley gate. Finally, we can head here, which has been open to us all along, pull the switch to open that distant exit, and use the action movie ramps with our boat along the now cleared path to finish the level in time. By the way, if you swim under the closed door after opening the exit, the timer won't start, so it'll just remain open forever, which is a little bit easier. If you were hoping to play with the boat some more, this little channel out front is your last chance in the game because we're on foot now. Bartoli foolishly put the unlock switch to his house on the outside so we can hit it on the left and head on in. In the corner past some chopping statues is a switch to open the outer doors you might have seen if you explored the side of the building in the boat. Hit it now or risk repeating a bunch of jumps later. To reach those outer doors, we need to jump up to the second floor using the wooden ramps in the middle of the lobby. Here's another angle of the route. We push this block out of the way. Actually, through perfect positioning, it's possible to find purchase by jumping straight up here and skip all that tedium. Either way, we end up outside, go along the awnings and balconies to reach the second floor proper. Immediately out the door to our left is the other balcony with a secret after we hit a switch in the nearby room to open it. Through that room, out a window and in another window, we can push a block into the fireplace and climb into a trap tunnel with swords and burners. Hopping over these leads to a large ballroom. This is just playing with chandeliers. We climb up two to pull a switch that opens a key alcove, then go further up, high into the rafters to hit another one that adjusts the heights of the chandeliers. From their new positions, we can jump to the alcove to get the library key, and find a third switch to open a fireplace trapdoor reachable out the window that drops us into a basement pool. From another angle, we can reach one point of interest from the yellow starting positions, and two new points of interest from the blue ones. The dark pool is kind of a mess. If we find the underwater lever, we can swim quite a ways into the underwater labyrinth to find the gold secret. When we climb out of the pool, the library lies straight ahead. The only open door leads up to a switch for the left door, and through there, we climb the actual bookshelves to reach an upper window to the courtyard. The point of going all the way up here is to use the balcony to get atop this brick wall and reach this far dockhouse area. There's one spot along the brick wall where we can just reach the roof and cross it to find a hidden enclave with the Uzis inside. Down in the dockhouse is the detonator key itself, and the detonator is found back in the library through the right door with a switch next to it. Through the garden is the back canal where the detonator is set up, but we need to ignore it first and check out the doomed building to find the Jade Dragon before we set it off, otherwise the explosives will destroy the room. At that point we can climb over the rubble to the rafters and slide down to the exit. The slide deposits us above yet another canal, and if we dive in and climb up the corner we can open a nearby trapdoor. We must continue up to return to the entrance before jumping through it for an ornate key. Head back outside and repeat the climb to make our way over to a room full of broken glass where our key will get us into the opera house grounds. These high rafters will collapse when we cross them so we gotta hustle to reach the roof dome. Up here in a corner is the button to open the trapdoor down into the building, and we have to dodge more boulders opening the gate to climb down into the theater. In here, we make our way down to the seating floors to a room across the way. Here's the theater layout. We come in on the fourth floor and have to get down to one and back up to three to continue. It leads to a flooded elevator shaft that we can climb out of to find the hallway to the dressing room. There's another ornate key here in the ventilation system that has big deadly fans at the bottom of long slides next to a button in a popular room someone could easily brush by accident. We have to jump up and around the brickwork to escape the vents, but if we turn around at the end we can jump up to find the Jade Dragon. Here's another look at the initial slide, the second slide from the bricks, and the high vent with a secret. In the dressing room we need to move the crates around to reach the high window ledge leading back to the theater where we can use our new key if we want but we aren't quite ready, so instead we exit stage right to flip a switch in the control room and head stage left for some platforming. We vault and shimmy to hit a switch that drops the bridge so that we can reach the far side of the room, climb up and jump past the sandbags to find the bottom that drops another sandbag and actually punches a hole in the stage, letting us drop through. 
Below is yet another flooded basement with yet another dark lever and another underwater secret, an important relay box, and a return climb to floor 3. Back across the way, we can now fix the elevator and send it down empty to reach the gold dragon above it, before writing it down and sending it up empty to reach the circuit board down in the water below, which is not generally a good thing for circuit boards. Regardless, we swim back to climb up to floor 3, use our key to return to the lighting booth where we enter the theater, and replace the wet circuit board. This modifies the stage backdrop and lets us reach the final storage areas, where Lara can see the cult is planning something big. We make our way around and scramble up over boxes to open the exit door leading to an idling plane outside. In between levels, Lara is discovered on the flight and imprisoned at the oil rig destination. It's a makeshift jail because we can pull out a box to reach the switch to open the door. Similar to Natla's mines in Tomb Raider 1, we need the ability to fight enemies before we can advance, so we dive into the water, avoiding the large fan's current to pull a lever and swim around, still avoiding the current, and up an underwater vent. At the end, we can open a trapdoor back at the start with the first secret. Further along, we emerge at a catwalk near the nose of the plane, and a button opens the cargo door on the plane's belly. In there, we can open the roof hatch, which we can access by swimming back through the underwater tunnel to the catwalk and climbing up the wing to get our pistols back. Now we can march down this hallway and take out the goons for the yellow card key. This opens up the second portion of the level. Up the right stairs we find some bunk beds with a button to open a timed ceiling hatch at one end of the room, and through it we arrive at some kind of incinerator room. By arranging blocks we can jump over the flames and reach the red card key. There's also a ladder here leading up to the radar tower with secret number 2 at the top. With the red card we can unlock a door past some barrel traps, leading to a room with two large pools. We need to flood the near pool instead of the far one so we can swim across and open a gate leading down to the underbelly of the rig. Down here, it's a jumping challenge. We have a long route with at least six tricky jumps to reach the green key card, and if you want the final secret down below, you have to do a chunk of it twice by swimming over here and climbing back up. Near the card is the exit tunnel towards the twin pools, and with the green key card, we can flood the original pool again and swim across to the now unlocked exit door. Right at the beginning of the next level, there's more dangerous water currents, so we jump over those to turn off the fan first, then we can swim over to this room with some dancing cranes. Annoyingly precise jumping and hanging is required to reach the next room straight out of Half-Life with toxic sludge at the bottom of a large slope. A secret waits if we slide down to this hole in the middle. We need to jump past the pool and find this extremely long ladder. What a thrill. At the top, a big drum with a catwalk running through the middle requires a mindful drop down the ramp to catch a catwalk edge lest we be forced to try again. A blue key card can be won here, and the drum's small door leads back around to the long ladder. Down the catwalk is a big square hallway with some heavy ordnance ahead. This room on the far side has another underwater sequence where we pull a lever and then succumb to the water's current so we can reach another lever and circle around to escape without drowning. That clears a path in the square hallway to head up to the helicopter pad and beyond, where, at the end of a fiery hallway, is a machine ship. The machine ship is used back in the pool room to reach this diving room, and another secret waits at the bottom of the pool if we hit a button in the corner. There's a long swim up here to reach yet another door button, and back in this room we can clear a path across to raise the helipad platform. This means that off the square hallway there's now another machine ship to find. We use that to turn off this dangerous machine and get the red card key, and use that to open the middle room back near the center and drop down above the deep submarine pool. This leads to the final part of the level, and we have to resist approaching the NPC in the room to find the final secret on the periphery before we follow the submarine. A real thick knot of keys and doors. Lara takes a big risk here and grabs onto a submarine as it's going down to unknown depths of the ocean with no breathing apparatus, so we'll see how that turns out. The Ocean Floor First, the facts. 40 fathoms is about 70 meters or 240 feet, definitely survivable by free divers in real life. Much of the ocean floor is closer to 4,000 meters down and long past crush depth. There are recreational shipwrecks intentionally sunk around 30 meters deep that you can explore in different places, so this is all at least plausible, for now. Okay, so set all that aside because we have to find air and escape the great white shark that's hanging around. The shipwreck our cult friends were seeking lies nearby and we can swim inside the hole to find a pocket of air. There are already goons down here, while we climb the box to find the first secret up above and then drain the path forward. There's immediately a timed switch leading over the burners to the Jade Dragon secret outside on the ocean floor. There's a sequence in the square hall. A switch unlocks this door, leading to a switch that turns off the burners over yonder, leading to a switch that opens a gate back near the ocean, which disables the other set of burners, necessitating a full run from one switch over to the next and through all four concurrently disabled burners. 
Once we get through that, we can douse Lara if necessary and swim up to some chambers to proceed. The gold dragon becomes accessible if we backtrack here, and up top are two big rusty red rooms. Climbing a mound of dirt lets us dump a bunch of it into the lower room and reach two more switches and eventually the underwater tunnel past some scuba divers. Short and sweet. So if that was us exploring inside the hull, this is us exploring the social areas of the ship. Through a flooded tunnel we find a large room with an air vent in the corner leading to the first secret. This is actually the swimming pool, you can see the diving board there, but it and the other parts of the ship here are actually inverted. By moving a couple blocks we reach another inverted room, some kind of grand ballroom, to get the restroom key. In the restroom, a button opens a small control center with more buttons. There's also a circuit breaker here we can't reach yet, but by closing the control center doors when we leave, we open the path for later. Those controls open an upper route through the ballroom over to the first attainable circuit breaker. In the next area, there are five doors in a hallway with a couple block puzzles to solve. One over here to climb up and around for a rusty key, and another over here to reach a back tunnel where the jade dragon is hidden above barrel traps. Beyond that, we must trick a trap door into opening and closing by hanging over the edge so we can reach a switch above it. That opens a route into this pit of broken glass, which is another fancy upside-down ballroom. By carefully making our way around so as not to fall into the glass, we find another circuit breaker below and a button to drain some water from the previous room. Now we can follow the dry tunnel to that restroom control room from earlier, and as long as we shut the doors, we can grab the final circuit breaker, drop back into the restroom, and return to the start of the level. Up above three big drums is a panel where we place our circuit breakers to rotate the drums, creating a path across to a big drop here. Swimming through the hall, we find the bridge, also upside down. We open another time door across the bridge that opens another door across the bridge, opening a path to drop into the ocean and retrieve the cabin key. The gold dragon is off here in an underwater cave as well. Inside the cabin, we open a trap door to reach the third and final inverted ballroom, and dropping into the ocean, we swim to the end of the level, halfway through the wreck. A little more linear here. We head back into the ship and climb up the far end of the piston room to find some burners amazingly still burning. Shimmy over them and climb up to adjust the pistons. We can jump back across them to find the silver dragon and reach a high hallway to adjust the pistons back so that we can reach this far switch that floods the burner room. We can now reach the underwater lever you might have noticed earlier high on the wall and swim into this big maintenance room. Still not in the living quarters. Heading down the central path leads to a little puzzle above broken glass and a switch to reach the high air ducts back in the maintenance room. Careful jumping here finally leads us out of the rust and into a hallway with the gold dragon and a puddly room with the jade dragon. Beyond is a neat, slanted room where everything's at a weird angle and we have to deliberately make our way across with careful hanging. This is the home stretch. Move a box out of the way, fetch a theater key in this non-inverted part of the ship, yes, another theater, and we can unlock the door and climb up here to the curtain control. Kind of weird to reuse this whole curtain concept that we already saw five levels ago, but whatever. Behind the curtain we flood a pit full of broken glass in the black and white room over here and swim to the exit. Now the final and weirdest part of the shipwreck, where we explore the decks of the ship in some sort of massive dry cave on the ocean floor. Here's the basic arrangement. Lara emerges on the right side of deck 1 in this picture, and actually the first thing we do is bail off to the side to find a stern key on the rocks below. Through the water we encounter the stern split off here, and clamber up the far side to go in and find a flooded lever. Fortunately the lever's mechanism still affects the trapdoor way over in a completely separate piece of the ship, and there there's a switch to drain the stern. The stern connects underground to this large lake with a secret at the bottom. By getting out in the corner, we find a cave leading up, allowing us to drop onto this emergency raft from above for the cabin key. The side cave also leads back around to the fourth deck. The cabin is nearby, but we won't get far if we go in just now. From here we can also trigger a panel in the corner of the deck swimming pool to reveal the gold dragon inside. By jumping down from deck 2, we stay atop these structures and hop onto the stern. From there we reach another ascending cave that will take us all the way back to deck 4, this time the rooftops of deck 4, where we drop into a room with a door switch behind a box. We'll also use our cabin key now to pull another switch and follow the back steps up and around to the storage key. That's the final obstacle. Now it's time to carefully drop down the decks, stopping at the high structure on deck 1 once again to jump over to the Jade Dragon, because getting this the first time would necessitate backtracking, and drop all the way down to the cave floor where the storage room waits beyond the stern. Inside, Laura finally recovers the Seraph. She returns to the surface, apparently runs back through the rig to get her clothes, runs out of fuel and route to the monastery, and crashes the plane in the Himalayan foothills, aka 
snowmobile territory. We make our way out and around, hiding from some boulders here on the side before emerging into this large valley with a lake at the bottom. An upper path near our emergence point eventually leads under the far valley wall and puts us in a position to hike up to the snowmobile shack. The first secret is up here off in the corner. Once we steal a snowmobile, obviously we're going to do some stunts. In this room, we jump off to the right so we can follow a raised path in a loop over the entrance and down past these ice blocks. We can push them out of the way first by going up on foot, but you can squeeze past on the snowmobile. Jump over some chasms and dismount here to find an ancient Tibetan cave switch. Continue on across this awesome ice bridge and up this big ramp. And as tempting as it is, of course they put a secret off to the side first, so hop off and get it, then we can do the sick action jump. Hop down and get the drawbridge key, get back over here to continue onto the frozen pond, and use the drawbridge to trace a path that triggers snowballs to roll down and break the ice. The key to the snowmobile hut was down here in the water. So we head on back and head on in. That opens up the final bit of snowmobiling. Another cool jump. This time if we dismount after the jump, we can climb down to the gold dragon and pass some heavy enemy resistance till we arrive at a large cliff over a pool of water. At this point, I think you know what to do. On the far shore, we finish the level. We've finally arrived at the gates to the monastery with Seraph in hand. There's a new wrinkle for Tomb Raider here. By default, not all the enemies here are hostile to Lara. The local monks fight the cult members, and they can kill each other, but they won't fight you unless you accidentally shoot one of them, so be nice. The clumsy monks have locked themselves out of their own monastery, so we have to climb up to the window. There's one room open to us that leads into a cool big ceremonial room with a cool statue. The main hall key is up here in the walkway, and over on the right we need to dodge two boulder traps on our way to this pool with a powerful drainage current. We'll drown in here if we succumb to the flow, so we have to stick to the walls and swim around to an underwater tunnel that drops to an eventual ladder. The first of five prayer wheels is in here, beyond some burners to jump over. By moving crates, we can return to the boulder hallway and the main hall. To get to ground level, we can use our key back where we entered the monastery to unlock the big doors. Exploring this side walkway reveals a key to a strong room, which is back through the double doors and contains a rooftop key. Out on the rooftops, there's a timed switch over here that gives us 20 seconds to clear this erstwhile fiery hallway, and here we go down to collect a pair of gemstones downstairs, hit a switch to climb up, and place a gemstone near the golden star to find a second prayer wheel. A third prayer wheel is found by exploring off the main hall a different way, down a couple long hallways and out a window into this courtyard. An enclosed tower gives us an opportunity to find it at the top of several ladders. In the opposite direction of the courtyard is a rough hallway with swinging spiky sandbags and a rolling pizza cutter. Partway through past a burner we can squeeze behind the pizza cutter and some slamming doors for the Jade Dragon. These slamming doors were pretty common in Tomb Raider 1, I think this might be the only instance of them in 2. A trapdoor key is in the room past the roller. At the end of the hall, we can discover the silver dragon in a hard-to-spot underwater tunnel off this big pool. We return to the main hall, where our trapdoor key opens a road under the monastery and around the outside. We can climb up this canyon ladder and cross a bridge to find this remote guardhouse with a fourth prayer wheel inside. And finally, it's time to do what any eagle-eyed Tomb Raider expected and cross the flat hands of the giant statue. A ladder off to the side gets us up there, and carefully jumping across and placing our other gemstone in this alcove allows us to open a secret room below. This is also a good chance to snag the gold dragon in a little niche behind the statue's back. The secret room we opened leads underground to a lever that drains the water in the large pool nearby. Behind a crate in the dry pool is the final prayer wheel. The five prayer wheels go in the room you probably found behind the statue, and there our seraph opens a large seal to a mysterious passage ahead. By the way, I use the same order for the prayer wheels here that Stella's guide offers, but you can do them in a different order, so the progression isn't as rigid here as it might have seemed. Similar to the obelisk and city of Kamun in Tomb Raider 1, the next two levels are effectively one big level split in two, with some geographic overlap and some repeated rooms. Right off the bat, the silver dragon is hidden behind a crack in the wall we can hang from on the left. Down in the crevasse, there's a switch to open a room with a pool. We also run into our first yetis now, but Lara seems unsurprised by their existence. Across the pool room, we climb up ladders and use the lever to open a cage with a Tibetan mask. That also drains the pool on the floor so we can drop down carefully and use the mask to open the door. Kind of redundant because you can't reach the lock without the mask anyway. We'll revisit this next villagey area a few times, but for now we only need to avoid these boulders and hop over to the next room, fend off a bunch of leopards, and find another Tibetan mask in this pool hidden behind a climbable rock wall. Back in the village, there's a ladder leading to a large dark temple. We use the mask to get in, light the torches, and fight four fierce frosties. The back room has a switch, but first we have to pull a block over to wedge the gate open so we aren't locked in. 
So now another route is open near the boulders, this time across a bridge and past more boulders to a high ladder ending in a hole over a lake. Time for a cold swim. Halfway through the pool is a landing with a ladder we can backflip off of to find the gold dragon. Further along, there's another ladder up to another ancient pullable mechanism. Large doors open below, so along we go, down another pit to open another way forward. There's a hill climb here with an avalanche to avoid, and the ice door on the right is broken by triggering another boulder run and one final puzzle. So first off, the gold dragon is hidden overhead when we stand on the left trigger to open the gate. To exit, we need to cross this trigger to open the timed exit, but there's a hidden trigger just before the middle doorway that closes it. So you'll either need to quickly hurdle the boulder and trigger to get out in time, or go around the side of the second trigger and jump over the spikes. After we hopefully discover that shooting bells opens doors, the second half of the level begins in a very ominous dark room echoing with the howls of yetis. Perfect spot to introduce a weird super jump mechanic into the game. Stepping on one of these spring pads launches Lara high enough to kill her if she doesn't catch something on the way down, so be careful. After probably dying a few times learning the ropes, we can spring up to this high ledge and open the yeti cages. The open cage reveals a side path with a switch to raise a new platform, and nearby behind a block we can find the gold dragon in a high room. This time we echo the invisible secret platform from Tomb Raider 1 with an invisible bridge over to the secret. By using another spring pad we're able to shoot this bell at the apex and land safely on a ramp. A third bell is over here after we spring up and turn around on the ledge, and the fourth and final bell involves springing up to a pair of slopes we have to bounce between while shooting. We can then climb over to the next room, and by dropping down into an enemy closet, we can find the silver dragon in a corner. At the end of that tunnel is another Tibetan mask. Back at the tunnel entrance, a path is now open to this dark room with spike pits. We need to find a safe place to drop onto the floor and make our way to the mask lock. That lets us back out into this village area from the last level, so we were just above that dark yeti room with the four gates. But the terrain has changed now, so if we fall off the bridge, we can climb up here rather than land back in the old level. We cross the rope bridge to the frozen pool and pour the burning cauldron onto the ice, thawing a hole in the surface. Turns out somebody must have dropped a gong hammer down here a long time ago. Under the ice, we can swim to a new cave with falling icicles abound, and beyond, another avalanche trap and climb a frozen ice wall. At the top is the titular Ice Palace, but before we take care of business, we can find a switch down in the chasm around this arena to open a small room above with a jade dragon. Then we bang the gong, open the palace, collect the talion, and step outside to face the artifact's guardian beast. With the talion in hand, it's time for Lara to return to the Great Wall, probably jump all over all those traps again, and open the ceremonial gate. This is the big one. When we approach the dagger dais, it betrays us and drains us down a pipe where water sprays us into a cave, but by backflipping mid-slide, we'll catch the edge when we arrive and slide to the gold dragon right away, yes. The whole level is now about making our way back up to the top. The only way to proceed is through the water to a temple with a spring pad around the side up to a rooftop lever. Back in the pool, we can then climb up to the next room, where the silver dragon can be found by carefully hanging and dropping down a zigzag wooden route over lava. You gotta have lava in your late-game levels. Around the wooden paths is a route up and out, over some spikes and a collapsing floor to a slide we need to jump off of before we get impaled. Further up, a switch opens the temple proper. Inside, past the memorable statue hall on the second floor is more lava, requiring a careful sequence around the edges of this tall room to reach a big trap. We'll be dropped into this room very reminiscent of the Great Wall, and need to pull a quick escape switch on the far wall before retreating behind us. The next room has a few iron boulders ready to crush if we rush. Traps beget traps after we use a switch to drop down a ladder rigged with swinging swords and rolling pizza cutters at the bottom. We emerge on the kind of rafters of the statue hallway, where a 10 second switch we pull at one end is followed by frantic jumps across the rafters to the gate. Through it are swinging spiked potato sacks and two buttons that we hit right, left, to proceed past a boulder and collapsing floors. In the ceremonial room is the dragon seal. To escape afterwards, we take a slightly convoluted path around the side of the large statue leading to a contraption that raises platforms to escape via this jump sequence. At the top, before we leave, up in the rafters above the boulder-infested exit ramp is the Jade Dragon. Back outside, behind a block, is a switch to the path back to the statues. We can use the Dragon Seal to reach another swimming sequence. The Dragon Seal leads to a room with a spiked ceiling and we have to find the three real switches among the fake ones in time. We pull a lever to block the water current so we can reach another lever, use that one to reach the third lever controlling a gate back at the start. Then this switch sweeps us back down the tunnel, we find another switch through the new gate we opened, use the very first switch again to raise the water level back up, and swim to a spike trap with a final switch that drops us into a long tunnel that leads us to the gold key. 
The key is used immediately to find a pair of pawns with a lever back here and the end ahead. We emerge and enter an area I'll affectionately call the giant spider hive. It's extremely dark, so we'll need flares as we navigate up and around the massive egg sack to a high path with a silver key at the end. Back at the temple, the silver key opens a gate on the right, leading to an overhead bridge and a spring pad puzzle. We'll grab each subsequent ledge until, at the top, we find the twin dragon statues. We need to find a switch so we can climb up to another switch, then drop down on the high ledges to reach the main chamber key. We slide down the dragon tail back to the ground and carefully jump across to the other statue, where we climb up and around a tall sequence of chopping ladders, and finally arrive back at the dais where we started. Things get a little more abstract in this final real level, more linear than the last one, but also pretty demanding in terms of traversal. We make our way across to a lattice room to open an upcoming door, and on the way back we drop down to get the mystic plaque. Continuing across the abyss, the jade dragon waits on the roof near an edge, and a second mystic plaque can be found inside the building. Around the side of this level, we hang and drop to a lower green checkerboard level, and from there we follow the green ledges over several jumps and to the second major island. Our mystic plaques open the gate here. The second secret is immediately available on the right over a subtle rock formation, and to the left we make our way up to a zipline. Haven't seen one of these in a while. But the ultimate destination for the zipline is currently sealed, so we have to bail partway across onto the bridge, head into a side room, and use the lever there to open the gate. Then we follow an alternate climbing route back up to return to the zipline, dodging jade boulders along the way, and this time we can make it into the jade fortress. In here, a switch above reveals a switch below that reveals a drop through lava into a safe pool that's probably getting pretty hot by now. We open another gate above, then swim over to a trap tunnel that actually allows us to disable the traps if we search diligently. Through the tunnel, we need to pull out a block to reach an upper door we just opened, then head into a spiked pit and hit another switch on our way up. Past there, an ornate floor pit leads down to a cage fight, or an uncage fight since it doesn't really start until we remove the cage bars. The switches down there open a big door above, leading to a lattice wall. We climb all the way up to a rocky valley. The level exits right there, but a bold jump across midway through leads to the final gold dragon hidden around the temple roof. The side door here is our destination. This time around, we get a short boss level to cap the game. First, we have a close quarters fight with several spear-wielding statues hiding switches, then a brutal fight with a bunch of knife-throwing Bartoli goons, one of whom carries another plaque, and finally the ceremonial plaza. Here we slay the monstrous dragon. Scattered around the arena are eight watering holes above a pool in case we need to douse the fiery breath or we run out of oozy ammo. Once Mark goes down and we draw the dagger from his chest, we only need to escape the crumbling tunnel to complete the game. The Cult of Bartoli is finally ended. A few nights later, the Cult of Bartoli shows up at Lara's front door. They trip the alarm as they show up with the goon squad, dogs, and guns. But Lara is not one to call the police. This time, the gun-covered key in Lara's robe pocket is our clue. Open the closet, load the shotgun, clear the property. There are enemies coming for the bedroom, on the balcony, in the main hall, out in the front circle, and along the assault course. That last one is especially deadly. But once Lara clears the stragglers, the war is finally ended.